Can you prevent atrial fibrillation? So, yes and no. You can't stop the AFib from developing ultimately because atrial fibrillation being these abnormal electrical cells that form in other walls of your heart that have the ability to randomly wake up, generate their own electricity, and take over control of your heart rate away from the normal source of electricity that tells your heart what speed to beat at. If you talk about atrial fibrillation cells as being these abnormal sources of electricity that not only form in other walls of your heart, but then as you get older, start to grow more and progress to more walls, and the more walls you have them on, the more they wake up. From that standpoint, no, you can't directly prevent atrial fibrillation because atrial fibrillation can occur just by getting older. Now, it is true that there are multiple risk factors that can accelerate the development of atrial fibrillation, where if you have atrial fibrillation, these other factors can cause atrial fibrillation to grow quicker on top of just getting older. And one could argue that if you don't yet have atrial fibrillation, controlling these risk factors might help you not develop atrial fibrillation for a longer period of time, but it's just one of those aging related things. What are the four things you can get by just getting living long enough and getting old enough? Well, if you live long enough, you could develop a cholesterol blockage in your heart vessels that leads to heart attacks, uh, heart blockages and heart attacks. If you live long enough, you can form cholesterol blockages in your brain vessels and have a stroke. If you live long enough, you can form some kind of cancer somewhere in your body. Or if you live long enough, you can get atrial fibrillation. Honestly, out of the four, it's not the worst one to have. But atrial fibrillation is primarily caused just by getting older, but there are factors that can accelerate it. So if you talk about, well, what are those factors? High blood pressure, uh, sleep apnea, diabetes, um, high cholesterol, smoking, being overweight, being too sedentary. Well, those are definitely things people can do. And if they do those things, they might not develop atrial fibrillation or they might develop at a much later age, just like if you controlled various factors in terms of trying not to have early heart disease or heart attacks. But once you develop atrial fibrillation, you have it. It's not gonna go away. You can't make those cells go away, but you can slow down the progression by treating those things, those factors. Now, having said that, atrial fibrillation, when it forms, there's different stages of atrial fibrillation. There's kind of an early stage, a middle stage, a late stage, and then permanent. And that has to do with how many AFib cells you have in the walls of your heart, how many walls are filled with AFib cells. And the more walls you have AFib cells on, the more AFib cells you have total, the more often it wakes up and the less it goes to sleep. So if you're at an early stage, you're not in AFib very much. If you're at a middle stage, you're in it a lot more, maybe, you know, 30 to 50% of the time. If you're at a late stage, you're in it 70 to 90%. And then once you have too many AFib cells on too many walls of the heart, it becomes permanent. And that's where you're in it 100% from that point forth. Now, whatever stage you're at, especially in the early stages, when you're only in it 3%, 5%, 1%, some small amount, Yes, you want to do everything you can to keep the AFib from progressing to a later stage where you're in it 30, 40, 50, 60 percent of the time. But when you're still at that early stage where you're mostly not in it, there are things that can wake up the atrial fibrillation. So things that can make you have more AFib episodes without necessarily making you have more AFib cells, but make you have more than what your stage is predicting would be things like stress, stimulants, alcohol. So stimulants, like any kind of stimulant, or even you know caffeine, high power, uh, high energy drinks, uh, chocolate, other stimulants, they can directly wake up AFib cells and make you have an episode. Alcohol is not a stimulant, but it does have direct toxic effects on your AFib to wake it up. There's a common condition known as holiday heart, where somebody binge drinks alcohol and they go into atrial fibrillation and they show up in the emergency room and after several hours or a day, it goes back to sleep and they don't seem to have many episodes of that unless they're drinking a lot of alcohol. To me, that's when you're at a very, very early stage of AFib where you're barely in it. You have some AFib cells there, but they're barely waking up. Yes, at that stage, if you avoid certain things like stimulants, caffeine, alcohol, 
or even stress in general, just this, you know, having stress of a job or stress in your life or stress of another medical problem, such as you come into the hospital with pneumonia or you had a major surgery and you're in pain. All of those things can wake up AFib even at very early stages where you're barely in it. But in the later stages where you have enough AFib cells where it's waking up on a regular basis and you're spending 50, 60, 70% of the time in it, it may not make as much of a difference because you have enough AFib cells where they're waking up regularly on their own. And whether you take caffeine or, or, or a stimulant or stress to wake it up a little bit more, you're probably not gonna notice as much of a difference. But in the early stages, when you're barely having any AFib, then yes, you can definitely have less episodes by not waking up your AFib with these known triggers. But just know that your AFib will probably over time slowly progress as you get older and eventually you can have more episodes of AFib waking up even without those triggers. So AFib cannot be directly prevented, but in the early stages, if you avoid waking it up with certain triggers, you can definitely have minimal atrial fibrillation.